Hi everyone. Today is the session of the quick revision of the femur, which is the strongest and longest bone in the body. And all of you know that this femur it actually about one eighth of the height of a uh, person. So in case of six feet person, it is eighteen inches in length. This femur. This is the example of the long, long bone which has got two epiphyses, the upper end, lower end and the shaft. And this upper end, you will see, you will, I will focus you, this upper end has got a globular head which will articulate with the hip bone and you will see it forms the uh, hip joint. That is the synovial polyaxial type of joint. Now it has cons it consists of a portion which is known as the neck of the femur. You see, this is the constricted neck of the femur, and this is the two tubercle. One is the greater trochanter, and another is the lesser trochanter. And these two trochanter are connected by means of a line which is known as the intratrochanteric line. Now, I shall discuss the upper end first. The upper end, the globular head, there is a depression you will see. And in this depression, there is attachment of a ligament. I had made it here. You will see the uh, glazy green color. This is known as the... Um, ligament which is the ligament of the head of the femur that transmit the blood vessels and the nerve and these blood vessels supply the one fourth of the head of the femur. Next thing you will see the neck. This neck is rough and it has got anterior surface, it has got upper border, it has got the lower border and it has got the posterior surface also and you will see in the posterior part at the junction of the neck and this I think the shaft there is an elevated margin this is known as the intertrochanteric crest and this intertrochanteric crest you will see in the middle there is an elevation which is known as the quadrate tubercle gives attachment to a muscle which I have done in another femur that is known as the quadratus femoris. You will see this is the quadrate tubercle and there is the attachment of the quadratus femoris muscle here. So next you will see this what is the capsular ligament of the hip joint where it is attached. Now the capsular ligament anteriorly it is attached along the intertrochanteric line. Above it is attached at the base of the greater trochanter and posteriorly it fits as a tight collar over the trochanteric crest. And I will make you in another femur the attachment of this ligament. That is, you will see this green color, this is attached at the intertrochanteric line. Then it fits as a tight collar or you may say the cuff of a full shirt. So in this pattern, it fits as a tight collar behind the neck of the femur. And if you see, I make the capsule transparent because you can see here, the how the femoral uh, head is articulating with the hip bone. Again you will see here it is articulating with the hip bone. So in this fashion there is the capsule it attached to the whole extent of the femoral neck. You cannot visualize you after dissection of the femoral triangle, the hip joint directly. You will see the whitish color of the capsule and this capsule extend in this fashion up to the hip bone. You will see this is the actually you will see no head of the femur 
but you will see the whitish capsule. Now when you cut the capsule, then you can get all these features of the neck. Now this capsule has got three thickened portion and this thickened portion is known as the ligament. Now what is the ligament here? The condensed part that is known as the iliofemoral ligament. This iliofemoral ligament above it is attached to the anterior inferior iliac spine. Below it is attached to the one limb attached to the lower part of the trochanter and another limb to the upper part of the intertrochanteric line. So intertrochanteric line gives attachment to the two limbs. So this is the iliofemoral ligament. This blue color represents the pivofemoral ligament. And if you go behind, there is another ligament that is known as the ischiofemoral ligament. Why there is the necessity of this ligament? Because it not only prevents the hyper uh, movement of uh, the, um, I think the hip joint. It regulates the movement to make them tight. Next part is the, you will see the lower end of the femur I shall discuss. Now this lower end of the femur, if you will see in the bone, you will see this is the, there is no attachment here. You will see there are two condyles. These condyles are connected in front by means of an intercondylar attachment and this part, this condyle has got articular area and the non-articular area. The articular area, the lower part, this is the convex and articulates with the tibia below forming the knee joint, tibiofemoral part of the knee joint and the articular area in front of the lower end this is the patellar articular area this patellar articular area articulate with the posterior surface of the patella and you will see it forms the patellofemoral part of the knee joint so the knee joint has got two components now, now comes to the shaft of the humerus sorry shaft of the femur now you see the shaft of the femur is very convex. In the middle part it is narrow but in the lower part and in the upper part it has got two additional surfaces. In the lower part this is known as the popliteal surface of the femur. And in the upper part you will see the posterior part there is a rough area. And this rough area is known as the gluteal tuberosity. Gives attachment to the very strong muscle, the one-fourth fiber, that is the gluteus maximus muscle. So, this is the gluteal tuberosity. In the midline, this is known as the elevated ridge, is known as the linea aspera. And if you trace the linea aspera downwards, what you will see? In the lateral side, the linea aspera forms the lateral supracondylar line and on the medial side, it forms the medial supracondylar line. Now, come to the attachment. You will see the gluteal tuberosity will present here. This gives attachment to a muscle. You will see the uh, insertion, it is depicted as a blue color. This is the gluteus maximus. The three-fourth of its fiber attached to the iliotibial tract. And in the linea aspera, you will see on the either side of the linea aspera, there is attachment of the two muscle. One is vastus lateral, is very thick muscle of the thigh. It begins from below the greater trochanter. It descends downwards and backwards. It follows the lateral outside the lateral leap of the linea aspera and ends at the supracondylar line next muscle you will see there is known as the vastus medialis now vastus medialis again it starts you will see it starts from the medial aspect then it descends downwards 
and ultimately it will go to the spiral line of the femur and then to the medial leap of the linea aspera. You will see the attachment of the vastus lateralis is more than the attachment of the vastus medialis. Next thing you will see here this lesser trochanter you will see here this is the lesser trochanter of the femur. This lesser trochanter of the femur gives attachment to a muscle which is known as the psoas major which situated in the paravertebral region. And this is a muscle, another muscle which is known as the iliacus which is attached at the base of the lesser trochanter. You will see it is the iliacus. So this iliosuas produces flexion of the hip joint and it is a strong flexion. And in the quadrate tubercle, you will see this is the quadrate tubercle attachment of the quadratus femoris, which is the lateral rotator of the hip joint. So, you will see this is the back side. And in the linea aspera, you will see in the book there is the picture. The picture of the linea aspera, it is expanded. You see, this small area, it gives how many muscle attachment? These two yellow color things, you will notice these two. So this yellow color, these are the medial and the lateral intermuscular septum. So if I move this region, you will see there is attachment of two muscles. One is adductor longus, this is the adductor longus and this is the adductor brevis. And this is, you will see the adductor magnus muscle, which forms the hamstring group and also the adductor group of muscle. Next muscle which is attached here that is the short head of the biceps femoris. So you will see how this narrow area gives attachment with the so many of the muscle because it is very thin. It lies the peels of a onion. Onion peel you will see it will like this. So this is the linea aspera of the femur. Now come to the anterior surface of the femur. Now anterior surface of the femur, it is smooth and convex. This smooth part you will see the whole extent, maximum part of the anterior surface gives attachment to a very strong muscle. I have made it here the clay by means of clay. So you will see here this is the vastus intermedius. When you actually uh, tightened your patella then you can see the quadriceps of the thigh that means the muscles of the anterior aspect of the thigh becomes prominent and this is a very good exercise for the osteoarthritis of the knee. Next in the lower part there is two small muscles that is known as the articularis genu because this small muscle suspend a barsa that means the largest barsa in the body which is we can visualize also that is uh, the barsa is known as the supra patellar barsa. Now I had you will see here the lower part the articular surface the non articular area you will see it has got the medial surface here there is an tubercle this is known as the medial epicondyle and in the upper part of the medial epicondyle you will get another small tubercle known as the adapter tubercle. Next on the lateral surface of the lateral condyle there are very important feature. There is a depression behind the tubercle. This depression lodges the one of the head that means the lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle that forms the muscles of the cuff. And another oblong groove is there above the articular margin. This is known as groove for the popliteus. This is intracapsular. So the popliteus muscle origin is intercapsular. This is very important. You will see I have show you the attachment of the capsular ligament. Anteriorly there is a gap. There is no capsule here through which the suprapatellar bursa come out. Next the capsular ligament is attached 
half centimeter away from the articular margin on the lateral surface it includes the groove for the popliteus come to the posterior part it is along the articular surface you will see here next it will go to the intercondylar line then it will go up to the margin of the articular area then again on the medial surface of the medial condyle of the femur it is half centimeter away from the articular margin and ends in front of the lower end of the femur so this is the uh, region the capsular attachment of the knee joint because it the femur articulate with the tibia we will look this is the femur lower end of the femur it articulates with the tibia forming a very important joint that is known as the knee joint condyloid variety you will see there is a movement that is known as the flexion and a movement this is known as the extension so how will you hold the femur in anatomical position you will hold the femur in such a way in front of the neck that the upper end of the femur should be directed upwards backwards and uh, medially just opposite to the direction of the humerus and this is and you will place the lower end below and the posterior ridge like area posteriorly so this is the anatomical position of the femur and you will see the fracture of the neck of the femur is very common particularly in the case of elderly and there may be the avascular necrosis of the neck and the uh, dislocation of the hip joint is more common it is in the early age group because of the laxity of the ligament there may be fracture on the lower part also so this is the end of the femur 